Is the commercial landlord responsible for electrical problems? We're gonna answer that question in this video. Okay, let's rock, let's talk about this. So if you're watching this video, I guarantee you you're probably having some electrical problems right now with your landlord and you're trying to determine are you responsible because they're expensive? We know electricians are not cheap to hire and you've probably got a big problem, so listen up. As you all know, I run various businesses. I've got lots of different businesses and different shopping centers, freestanding buildings, whatever. And so as time goes, like everybody else, I deal with problems. So ironically, I had a pretty big problem today, which is why this topic is so fresh and so hot with one of my landlords and it had to do with electrical problems. So let's talk about what type of electrical problems you can have, and we're gonna determine basically whether or not I think the landlord should pay for it, and this might shed some insight to help you out. Hopefully I'm helping you out here. So you can have electrical problems on the inside and on the outside. And what I mean by that is, on the inside obviously it could be something like outlets, something going to your breaker box and things like that, um, you, you know, you might have just moved in and the second you signed your lease and you got in, there's already problems. There's so many different variables that could play into this. And then, depending on like if you're in a shopping center like some of my businesses are, where we share space, they might have electrical stuff going on outside. Outlets, maybe lights that are lighting up flowers and bushes and things like that. So they're kind of two different things. So let's start, well, let's start on the outside. If you're talking about lights, that are shining on the bushes and the flowers and maybe some of the signage or something like that, usually that's gonna be the landlord's expense to maintain, to pay for, to run, all of that stuff. Usually the landlord pays for that. Now, what you might or might not know is that's probably built into your monthly rent some way, somehow. They call it common area maintenance. So every single year, you've got landlords that you know, they have to do snow removal, they have to do lawn care, they have to do maintenance, sweeping and cleaning the parking lot, They, you know, trash removal, things like that, electrical work. That usually is bundled into something called common area maintenance, okay? It's the common areas that all the tenants of the shopping center use, and they get a bill at the end of the year, and they, they might have spent $50,000 for the whole shopping center, and what they do, generally, is they divide that up and charge you based off your pro rata share, based off your square footage. So let's use an example. Let's say you have a, a small location and it's a thousand square feet, and the whole shopping center is 20,000 square feet between everybody that's in the center. Well, 1,000 divided by 20,000 is 5%. So you're gonna occupy 5% of the center, and so if the landlord in the lease agreement is telling you, that you have to pay for the common area maintenance, your pro rata share, what they mean is he's gonna bill, he or she or that group is gonna bill you 5% of the annual costs. And they usually do it monthly, right? So they divide it by 12 and you add that to your rent. And that's usually in your lease agreement. So make sure you get your attorney, whoever you've got helping you out with your lease agreements to make sure you know what you're signing up for because that could get costly depending on what the landlord decides to spend money on that somewhere down the line. So that's common area maintenance. And that is, it is perfectly normal to do that, which is another reason why if you haven't thought of this, I highly recommend if you haven't signed your lease yet to try to negotiate a flat rent. Just tell the landlord, look, I'll pay you rent. I'll pay you, let's say you want to pay them their asking price. Say, but I want a flat rent and I'll guarantee three years or four years or five years in my lease agreement, but I want a flat rent no matter what the property taxes go up, what the common area maintenance is, what the you know, insurance is, if insurance rates go up, whatever it is, I'm not gonna let you bill me and hit me with surprises at the end of the year. Nobody likes those surprises when you have to reconcile and you think you made a bunch of money and then you owe the, land, the landlord like several thousand dollars. Nobody likes that. So do your best to do that if you have enough. So now let's talk about electrical work on the inside. So generally, depending on the circumstances, it usually is the tenant's responsibility. Now, if you just moved into a center, and your outlets aren't working, I mean, you've got a lot of room for argument here. But remember, whatever you're doing with the landlord, the more problems you cause a landlord, the less likely they are to wanna deal with you in the future. 
So if they just signed a lease with you and you're gonna be one of those tenants that every month or every other month finds a tiny little problem and wants to make the landlord pay for that problem or make it their problem, you can almost bet that you're not gonna get renewed when it comes time to renew. And that could really hurt you and here's how. So let's say you've got a, a business really established and you signed like a five-year lease and you've been there for five years, you're established, you got your customers coming in, you're making money, you're happy, and then it comes time for renewals. So a couple months before, a few months before, I like to do it well in advance, a year before, you start negotiating with your landlord to say, hey, I wanna renew my lease, business is good right now. Well, most likely they're gonna jack your rent up, so you're gonna pay more money in rent, that's almost a given, but that's if they're gonna renew you. If you've been problematic and you've complained about every little tiny small thing, they're probably gonna say, you know what, we've got somebody else that we've been working on, so your last day is at the end of the lease, you gotta move out, and you're gonna say, whoa, and now all of a sudden, from all that complaining you did and all those problems, you've cost yourself a lot in moving costs because now you're gonna have to move your business out, move to somewhere else, probably do more build out. And so the lesson to learn, a huge takeaway from this video is this, try to be the least problematic tenant for your landlord as possible. So that way you've got leverage with that landlord someday if you want to renew your lease or you want to get maybe a better lease rate, they're going to look and say, wow, I almost forgot this guy existed. He just pays rent every month. I just get a check. He never creates problems. He never complains. And so what I like to categorize small problems like these electrical problems as is a COB. It's called a cost of business or cost of doing business, whatever you want to call it, COB. Okay, some things just from being in business are complete surprises. And although they don't seem fair and you get frustrated, you get angry and you're like, whoa, I don't wanna pay for that. You know what? Life's not fair. Just accept the fact that business life is even more not fair. It just happens. Crap comes up and you just have to pay for it. Whether you like it or not, you just gotta pay for it. And yeah, it's 200 bucks out of your pocket or 500 bucks out of your pocket. That's the cost of being in the game of business, right? And so you have to, you have to pick your battles with your landlords. Don't just always complain. Decide, is this really worth the fight? Do I even have leverage? I might ask the landlord and they're gonna say, hey, look at your lease. It already says it. Remember, dummy, you signed it. You know, look at all 30 pages or 50 pages of your lease. It's already, your answer's already in there. That's what landlords tend to do. They refer back to the lease agreements. And in most cases, they've already covered themselves with most things that can go wrong. So they're just gonna point you and say, yep, just go look at, you know, page 10 and section three, subtitle I or double I, whatever. You know, that's what they're gonna do. And you're gonna have your answer there. You're gonna say, man, I, I forgot about that. Well, tough, you signed the lease, That's it's in there. So here's an example of something that happened to me that I would like to share with you that I'm going through right now with a landlord. And that is, we got, we've been in this spot for like 10 years and we got this notice from the city that some of the bulbs behind the signage are burnt out, right? So this particular location has those acrylic type of almost like a slip sign. It's like a real thin, uh, cheap acrylic, you know, sign that just slips in at the top of this big gigantic canopy that's completely connected to the building, okay? So everything's connected. It's this, it's this tiny little building with this canopy and then you slip a sign in and that's our sign, all right? So what happened was the city says, they send a letter to us and the landlord, it's all bundled together saying, hey, you gotta replace the bulbs behind the signage. So initially, like I told you earlier in this video, I was, you know, I pick my battles and I'm like, oh, I'll just pay for it, whatever, screw it. I'm just gonna pay for it. And so I called uh, somebody that I knew that's done work on some of the other stuff, some of the other properties, some of the other businesses that we have. And I was like, I need you to fix this. I need it fixed now. I just wanna get it over with. So he went and looked at it, looked it over. And he's like, hey, this is a mess. You know, this canopy is like fastened. This is a part of the building. And if I get into it, I might break something. And I don't want to do that. And then, you know, the, I don't know what the costs are to replace this stuff, but it could be expensive. So call your sign guy. So I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So you can't just like somehow get into it, unscrew something and, and put the bulbs in. He's like, no. So I call my sign guy. Sign guy comes out multiple times. Did you know this canopy is basically like fastened to this building? It's like attached to it. I'm like, yeah, that's what the last guy told me, but I just want the bulbs replaced. Can you just get them replaced? So I'm just, you know, I can, I can 
check off the box off of being with the city and, 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 and make them happy and rectify the situation that they're complaining about. He's like, yeah, but it's probably gonna cost you quite a bit of money. And I'm like, well, well like how much? He goes, well, it depends on what you wanna do. He goes, I, I'm probably seeing at least a couple thousand dollars worth of work. And I'm like, a couple thousand dollars worth of work? What do you mean? Holy cow. I mean, we're talking about some like old school bulbs, like T12s that, you know, fasten on to ballast, an old school non-LED that sucks all kinds of energy and your power costs are high. So you got these old like 1980s or 1990s gigantic long bulbs that are supposedly behind our signs that light them up at night. Heck, we're not even open at night. We close at like six o'clock. It's still light outside. We don't even use these things, right? But for whatever reason, the city wants the, the bulbs behind the signage, which are not part of our actual signage, they want those fixed. And so I'm already going through all these issues and I'm like, gosh. And so both people told me, hey, you need to get a hold of your landlord. They really need to pay for this because your sign's fine, but you know, this is what's going on. So I reached out, I sent the landlord, you know, I'm always be proactive with landlords, especially if there's a city complaint, like you have to rectify that, right? And so I'm trying to talk to the landlord. I'm dealing with the property manager who's very, very tough to deal with. Usually deals in a very, I want to say like more condescending way, not a very nice, friendly manner, very business-like, but, but more in that condescending way where you feel like you're being insulted every, every other word that they speak, right? So I'm dealing with that. I said, hey, look, you know, I looked at the lease and the lease agreement says I'm, I'm responsible for maintaining signage and all this stuff and my signs are fine. The signage is fine. These bulbs, the canopy, everything's attached to the building. That's like, you know, landlords are generally responsible for the roof and the, and the building, right? The structure of the building, usually not electrical problems. So like, you know, is the landlord, you know, the question of the video is the landlord responsible for the electrical problems? It, they can be and they can't be, but most of the time they're not, especially on the inside. You got to pay for it, which is a bummer because it can get really expensive like we talked about. So anyway, long story short, I go back and forth with this property manager. Property manager is like, oh, let me get a, let me call the actual landlord. It's, there's like a few of them that make up the landlord entity, which is always fun. And then she's like, oh, well, I, I'm going to give, uh, you know, I'm going to try to see if they can pay for like half of it or something like that. Maybe help you out. No promises, but I'll see what I can do. It's like, okay, great. Hope to hear from you, you know, tonight or today, tomorrow, whatever. Well, what ends up happening is I wake up the next morning and for the first time ever, I get an actual notice of default. Like I'm in default. Whoa, you know, all these years, almost 30 years of being in business, I get this. And it's totally not right. Like there's no way, I'm not in default. I've paid my rent on time. I got insurance. I'm fixing everything. We still have time. There's nothing in default. All I told them was, hey, I think you guys should pay for this. I don't want to pay for it. It's not fair. If anything, let's split it. Something to that extent. I was trying to be fair and compromise. And rather than communicate, they decided to be real rough with me. So the bottom line is landlords have a lot of power over a tenant, especially if you personally guaranteed, you know, the, the entire lease agreement. So you have to think about that. You have to be careful because if you fight it too hard, they might just put you into default and try to destroy your credit or something like that, right? So pick your battles. The biggest takeaway from this video is that in general, usually the tenant is responsible, unfortunately. I hate it, I'm, I'm the tenant right now of this property and I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's usually the truth. If you have a cool landlord and you can negotiate or maybe, you know, maybe they'll say, hey, we'll pay for this one, but the next one you got to pay for whatever. That's great. That's a bonus, but don't expect it. Just know that you're probably going to have to pay for the bill. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any other questions, comments, you want to know how this crazy story went, I'm sure at some point in the future, I'll know how the ending happened. Feel free to comment, please like, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to keep delivering. Make sure also that as always, no matter what happens, no matter what tough times you're going through with this landlord or whatever, keep pushing, keep pushing hard and be the hustler.